The shift left approach is a concept where you conduct extensive testing as early in the building process as feasible. So the majority of the testing shift to the left on the timeline. This allows for a significant reduction in the total cost of defect resolution. The later a defect is detected in the process, the longer it takes to rectify it, involving more staff and ultimately resulting in a higher expenditures to attain the desired quality of the system. Of course, there are many good reasons why the testing can shift left. For example, early development environments are usually not connected to the third-party systems. And that means that any verification is pushed to the later stages. The other issue is the lack of the proper data for testing, which may lead to the meaningless outcomes, even if those are possible. Overall, despite its appealing practical concept, shift left is often very hard in implementation. Third-party system virtualization combined with automated testing execution perfectly addresses those issues. Almost every organization already possess plentiful messages in the best quality possible in the productive environment. Redirecting those to early environments not only makes organization independent from its suppliers and vendors, but what's even more important is that it makes the need for the test data creation completely off the table. To put this into money perspective for the sake of our business case, we'd either have to rely on generally available statistics, as those presented on the screen, or on some historical data if we have any at hand. Let's take a look at how the use of these approaches may look like in the practice. First, we would have to look at the defect resolution rate before implementation of the shift left concept and put it against the detection rate post its implementation. Relying only on the statistical publications, we should be aiming for something like 70% detection rate in the unit testing, 50% during the string integration test, and 50% during user acceptance test with the shift left in place. On the contrary, the most common approach gives the following numbers, 15%, 55%, and 30% respectively. Once we realize that, it's easier to see how much could be saved on early defect detection. Let's now have a look at the work effort it takes to resolve the defect. Rather conservative approach assumes that defect resolution time will double each phase of the project. So if we start with four hours during the unit testing, we will have eight hours in the string integration testing and 16 hours during user acceptance tests. These are of course very general assumptions and each organization may have its own statistic, not necessarily better. All that is now left to do is to combine the difference in defect resolution rate with the cost of actual resolution effort. Joining it with the testing scope in each release and average labor cost should result in the money saving that the company should see only for the shift left implementation. Rate.